And this one right here, Tozando Full Custom Yaito Suzaku. Let's take a look at this. See guys, this is it. I'm going to be jumping right into it. Let's open this up immediately. Tozando said, Shogo, you made an amazing custom katana set this time. Would you like to? And welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. So one of the questions I get the most through the comments and DMs and such is, Shogo, I really want to make a custom katana, but how should I do it? Now, of course, there are ways of making custom katana, real katana too, but making a real custom katana is going to be super expensive. I would say that the cheapest price will be about 1 million yen. But I completely understand, you still do want to have your ideal katana, you know, with the best color scabbard and the handle and some of the handguards and such inside of a room, right, to decorate. So, I actually have a recommendation. And it is the Tozando, my favorite katana shop's custom Yaito, the zinc alloy katana. Now, if it's the training katana, of course it won't be sharp, you can't cut anything with it, but the price will be about one-tenth of the price of a real katana. So if you want to make a custom katana just to decorate inside your house, or possibly for training, I think this is going to be the best option for you. But also, I have, of course, recommended the Tolzando custom katana page many times to my viewers, but a lot of people have been asking me, but Shogo, I still don't understand how to choose each part of the katana. I don't understand where is where and what is what. So today what we're going to be doing is I'll be taking a look at the Tozando custom katana page together with you so I can let you know which is what part of the katana. And also at the end of this video, I actually have ordered my custom Yaito, both the Uchi katana and also the Wakizashi. So I'm going to be opening it up in front of you guys and going to be showing you what my ideal katana looks like. And also at the end of this video, there's going to be an amazing, very surprising announcement. So please watch this video until the end. In this channel, you can take a closer look at Japanese traditional culture, tips on travel in Kyoto, and social problems in Japan. So learners and lovers of Japanese Asian culture, be sure to subscribe to enjoy more content. So then, first of all, let's start taking a look at Tozando's custom katana page. So here we are. This is the Tozando's website. And if you take a look at the tabs on top here, there is Iaido. And inside the Iaido, there's Iaito, which is a Gala Katana, and inside of here there is the full custom Yaito. So let's take a look at this page here. And this one right here, Tozando Full Custom Yaito Suzaku. Let's take a look at this. And here it is. This is the page to order the Tozando's Full Custom Yaito. So let's take a look at each item. So the first one here, Blade Type. So if you open up the tab here, Kyojun Standard Blade, Keiryo Lightweight Blade, and Habahiro Heavyweight Blade. So the blade, there's different types of blades, and there's the standard one, the lighter one, or the heavier one. If you choose the heavier one, it's actually pretty close to a real katana. For example, um, I have a few Yaito here, actually. This, um, this is the first one that I bought when I started training Yaito, this blue one. And the purple one under it is the one that I bought two years ago when I started my own company. But this one actually has the thicker blade. Yeah, this one has a thicker blade. Let, let's compare it. So you can see this one is the Hyojun, the standard, and this one is the wider one. So it's a little bit bigger. And also if you can take a look, it's thicker too. And it's much heavier. I would say that this one is about 1.3 times heavier than this one. The standard ones are actually very, very light. This is very far away from the weight of a real katana. But again, if you use a Yaito that is the weight of a real katana for your training, it does take away a lot of your energy. And you do need some muscles yeah, and some skills to be able to handle it. So that is really up to you. If you want the blade to be as heavy as a real katana, even for your training, if you want a heavier katana for your training, you can buy these types of katana. So that's the first thing, the blade type. And I believe that depending on the length of the katana, if it goes from a certain length, I think it will have to be the habahiro, the heavyweight blade. The next is the blade length. If you open up here, you can see from 2.2 shaku to 2.45 shaku. So you can choose a length here. Basically, one shaku is 30.3 centimeters, one sun is 3.03 centimeters, and one bu is 0.303 centimeters. And the right length for you, they actually have a chart here. If you open up this picture here, this is the recommended Yaito blade length. So depending on how tall you are, you can actually decide the length of your katana. 
Then after choosing the blade type and blade length, next is going to be the Hamon. Hamon is one of the most beautiful parts of the katana and I'm pretty sure you'll struggle to decide which one you like. So you can see that there's a lot of different pictures. There's Suguha, Notare, Midare, and all of these different types of Hamon here. And if you want to take a closer look at them, of course you can zoom into the screen, but also in the pictures here, you can see that there are some pictures showing the Hamon as well. You take a closer look at them like this. Oh, for example, here on the top, there's actually a Muramasa one too. That's really cool. And the Hamon, by the way, the quality of the katana does not change depending on the Hamon. Like for example, even for the real katana, just because this sword has this kind of Hamon doesn't mean it's sharper or anything. It's, this is literally just up to your preference. So you can run through all the Hamon and see which one is your favorite. And just like the Muramasa, of course, each Hamon is created by different swordsmiths, different regions of swordsmiths. They all have, of course, a lot of history and culture. So if you're interested, if you find, for example, a hamon that you like, let's say right here, you take a look at Kotetsu, for example, this one here, and you think, okay, Kotetsu is really, really beautiful, you can look up more information about Kotetsu because there's a lot of culture and history behind it. Then I'm pretty sure you'll be able to love your custom katana even more. Then now that you have decided your hamon, next is the bohi, it's written here. This is the groove of the katana. And as you can see, there's actually different types of grooves. There is the single groove, there is a deep groove, double groove, and no groove. Basically, the groove is to make the katana lighter. And most cases, the yaito, the training katana, does have the bohi. And as you can see, the double groove pattern is for aesthetic purposes only, will not affect the weight of the blade significantly. The single groove will actually lower the weight of the blade more than the double groove, it says. In the end, it's really up to your preference again, which design you like. By the way, this one, again, this is the more expensive Yaito that I bought two years ago. This one actually is the deeper groove because it's longer and it was the, basically a little bit more heavier. I wanted to make the groove even deeper. So the design of the katana itself changes a little bit too, depending on how you create the bohi. So you can consider that as well. And of course, not having a bohi is completely fine as well. So that's completely up to you. And the next ones, hisaki and tome, are literally to where the grooves reach. So again, this is completely up to your preference too. Like how far you want the groove to come to the tip of the sword, the hisaki, and to the mirror to the handle, which is the tome. This doesn't have that much um, significant differences either. Maybe if you bring the tome a little bit down to the handle, it might be a little bit uh, lighter, possibly, but it's almost going to be the same. So this again is completely up to your preference too. If you can take a look at the yaito that I have again, you can see that the tome, this one, is a little bit farther away from the handle, but this one's a little bit closer, right? But this is the amount of difference it is. Mm -hmm. It can go all the way down to the habaki, this metal fitting here, but again, that's just the design. Then the next one is something as important as the hamon, the wave patterns. It is the tsuba hand guards. And as you can see here, there are tons of designs. And again, for the designs of the tsuba hand guard, just choose something that you like. You're gonna go through the collection here, and if something catches your eyes, that's probably your favorite one. But of course, all of the designs have some kind of a meaning to it. Let's say this one right here. This one is a tombo, which is a dragonfly. As I explained in my past videos, tombo dragonflies was considered the winning insect for a samurai. So if you like the dragonflies, you can choose this tsuba. I think this one is really, really beautiful. This one is actually a tsuba with samurai riding horses. So this one is actually a type of pictures. And this one right here is actually really famous for being a tsuba handguard for the katana that Miyamoto Musashi used. So please take your time, look at all of the tsuba handguards up close to take your time to decide which one you like. This is absolutely one of the most fun things about uh, making a custom katana, being able to choose your favorite design for your tsuba handguard. Then next up is the habaki. Habaki again is the metal fitting just above the handguard. It's this right here. There's actually, as you can see, different colors, different designs to it. And again, this is completely up to what you like. There's gold, there's black, there's silver, there's bronze, there's some designs on it, there's some patterns on it and such. This one, I believe, is just simply the gold one. As you can see, I've been using this katana for a long time, so the colors are starting to change a little bit. And on this one too, yeah, it's basically the very simple golden one. And the next metal fitting that's written here, set is really close to the habaki as well. Seppa is actually this right here, as you can see. Right under the habaki, there's this round metal fitting on this side and also on this side as well. So basically it sandwiches the tsuba handguard. So there are different colors 
and also designs for the Sepa as well. So you can choose this too. So you open it up, you can see Sepa has the black finish, the gold finish, silver finish, and brass too. So now we're going to be moving on to the tsuka, the handle. First of all, you get to choose the length of the tsuka. You can see if you open up here, you can see 7.5 sun to 1.15 shaku, 35 centimeters. Now this is really difficult too. It's probably better that you choose a standard length for the katana first, if this is your first katana. But of course, the longer the tsuka handle is, there you can control it more precisely because you can move your hands around. But for example, if you just started training iaido, if the tsuka is too long, it's gonna be really difficult for you to be able to find the right balance where you should hold it and such. So for example, if this is gonna be your first katana for your training, it should be the st standard length or if you've been training for a while now if you want to be able to do some different techniques or different movements with your katana you could try having the longer tsuka handles too and again if it's just for decoration you can choose whatever tsuka length you like and along with the length you can choose also the shape as well the first one is the hyojun standard shape next is the imo straight grip and also lastly is the ryugo the hourglass grip you can see that the shapes of the tsuka handles are slightly different but to be honest though, I have personally only tried out the Hyojun, the standard type tsuka before, so I don't know if the Imo or the Ryugo, I don't know how they would affect your grip and how it would affect the swinging and such. So that I believe you would have to try it out yourself and actually let me know if you actually buy the Imo or the Ryugo. And there's more, the tsuka material as well. The tsuka material is talking about the wrapping here. There is cotton, silk, leather, and suede. So for example, this one here is actually leather that I have. And this one is the first Yaito that I bought. This one actually has cotton wrapped around it. So you can see that it looks completely different. In terms of using the Yaito for training, I heard before that suede is probably the most recommended one. But as for design, I personally like the leather the most. If you take a look at my two real katana, this is the leather and this is the suede. So you can see that although both are brown, this is light brown, this is dark brown, you can see that it looks completely different, right? I personally like the leather the most. But that is, again, it's up to you in the end. And let's say, for example, you chose leather. After choosing it, you get to choose the color of the, the tsuka wrapping as well. Black, dark brown, brown, and all the other colors. And next is the tsuka maki. So there's actually different ways of wrapping the tsuka maki. So the hineri maki is the regular way of doing it. There's also the ikkan maki, where in the middle there are actually some straight wrappings. And lastly, the gangimaki. Gangimaki is almost all of them are straight wrappings. The way of the tsukamaki, the way you wrap the tsuka string around the handle, changes the image of the whole decoration completely. So I personally think that this is a really important point. I so far only own the standard type of wrapping actually, so I can't show you the ikamaki and the gankimaki. But if you're going to be training Iaido, and if it's, this is going to be your first katana for your training for example, I think you could start from the, the standard one because it fits into your, to your hands, into your palm easier, and you can do the swinging. And the ikamaki and the gankimaki will be a little bit more advanced, I personally would feel. And lastly for the tsuka handle, there is the tsuka same, which is the ray skin inside the wrapping. So for example, this one, you can see that it's black completely. And for this one, you can see that the ray skin is white. So there are different colors and also different designs for the tsuka same as well. You definitely need to combine, you know, the colors of the tsuka maki, of course, the string, and also the ray skin inside it. Yeah, try to find your best balance. And now moving on to the huchi and kashira. Huchi and kashira are actually on the top and bottom of the handle. So you can actually choose the design of this two items as well. And just like the Tsuba handguard, again, there are tons and tons of designs for if you take a look at it right now here, see? And again, you can match this with the Tsuba handguard. You don't have to match it with the Tsuba handguard. It could be something completely different. Again, this is all up to you. It won't affect um, swinging the katana or anything. This is just part of the decoration. And along with that, there's also the menuki. Menuki is actually this. This decoration here that's wrapped inside the tsuka wrapping on this side and also on this side too. So my first Yaito actually have plum flowers, the symbol of plum flowers as a minuki, but this one actually has characters on it. And you can take a look, there are a lot of designs, flowers and plants, insects, fish, animals, samurai, um, characters, symbols, literally everything here. 
So you can take your time, take a close look at each of them and choose your menu key too. And also when you choose the menu key, you can take a look at the menu key position as well. For example, my katana that I have here, the menu key on the left side is higher and on the right side is lower. But as you can see on the screen here, you can choose where you want the menu key. It can be the opposite way around, or you can have menu key both on the middle of the tsuka handle. Now, where the position and the size of also the menu key does affect your grip though. And generally, this is the standard one. So when you hold onto it, basically the menu key will come to your fingertips. If you have it on the other side, or if you have the menu key right in the middle, it will affect a little bit of your gripping. Then finally, let's move on to the saya, the scabbard, the sheath too. You might be surprised, but there's actually a lot of different designs and colors for the Saya sheath, the scabbard too. And again, this is all up to you. You can choose your favorite color. You can choose the one that are a little bit shiny like these ones or matted, different colors, brown. There's also white, red, you know, blue, green. There are ones that actually have the Samekuro. So there's actually more ray skin on the, the scabbard too. So that's also your option. It's going to be a little bit more expensive than the regular ones, absolutely, but they are beautiful design too. And the last few ones are just more details of the scabbard. The Koiguchi reinforcement is talking about this here, if you want more reinforcement around the entrance of the scabbard. And the reason why you want that is because when you put the sword back multiple times, for example, if you draw and sheath every time, if you continue to hit the entrance of the scabbard, they do tend to crack or break. So in order to prevent that, you could have these reinforcement. But again, that's up to you. And the next is the kurigata reinforcement, which is right here, this right here. Kurigata is the hole where the sageo string goes through, and you can also have reinforcement on this as well. The shitodome is actually inside the kurigata. You can see that there is some golden color here, right? And also on this side, there's some golden colors. This is the shitodome. So you can choose the colors for this as well. Also, the kojiri is right here the other end of the scabbard. So this is the koiguchi, the entrance, and this is the other end. You can choose the design for the kojiri too. Unfortunately, all of the katana that I have don't have any special decorations on the kojiri, but as you can see here on the website, you can have all sorts of different designs on it too. And then lastly is the sageo. Sageo is this string here. There's different material for the sageo too. If you open up here, you can see cotton, silk, silk kikyo, and silk hyori. So basically the options for sageo is cotton or silk. And the silk kikyo and silk hyori is just simply about the design. And this, by the way, I personally would say that the cotton, these, this is actually cotton sageo, but the cotton sageo is a little bit softer. So when you're actually training martial arts, it's a little bit easier to handle. And that's exactly the reason why it's a little bit more expensive too. I personally feel this one over here is actually a cotton one, but this one is a little bit more stiff. Even though I've been using this sagyo for a long time, it's still a little bit hard. And whenever I do yaido performances and such, sometimes it still gets stuck somewhere because it's really stiff. If you have a little bit more budget, I would absolutely recommend the silk ones. These are a lot softer and more flexible. And just like the tsuka wrapping, after choosing, for example, silk in this case, you can choose the different colors. And if you open up silk kiko, you can see that this is the kiko design. And this is the hyori design. Basically the front side and the back side have different colors. And that is the end. After you have chosen all these items, you'll be able to create your ideal katana. So then, as I said at the beginning of the video, I actually already have ordered my ideal katana through this website, through Tozando. So it's finally time for you to see it. I am so excited. I have been waiting for this for a long time. So then guys, this is it. This is my Wakizashi and Uchi katana set that has got to my house. I'm going to be jumping right into it. Let's open this up immediately. Ooh. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, this is so cool. I'm just gonna put the bag over here for now. Guys, take a look at this! My ideal Wakizashi. Oh, this is so cool! It's fully red. You can even see that the ray skin inside the wrapping is red too. And you recognize the ikonmaki too. But let's open up the Uchi Katana as soon as possible as well. It is beautiful. Oh my gosh. 
This is the Uchi Katana of my custom katana. Wow, it's so beautiful. So this is it guys. This is the ideal katana that I wanted to have. It is so beautiful. When I ordered this katana, I actually had an image inside of my mind that I wanted to use it for my Yushinkan training. So then when I imagined Yushinkan, it just had this red image inside my mind and I just wanted to make a fully red designed katana. If you start taking a look at the details, for example, actually the Huchi and Kashira over here is both waves. And also this side too, the Kojiri is also waves of the ocean. And also the Tsukamaki is, again, as I said, told you earlier, I love leather. So it's red leather for both the Uchi Katana and the Wakizashi. And the Minuki that's wrapped inside this is actually a fan. Again, just like our channel's icon is a fan, right? So I wanted to put this as the Minuki. And actually the Tsuba handguard is a carp, the carp fish. And you might be thinking, why carp, right? Um, I was born in Kyoto, but I actually grew up in Hiroshima. And Hiroshima actually has a baseball team, the Hiroshima Carps. So when I thought about the red color, you know, the carps just came into my mind. And although I don't watch that much baseball, you know, I just wanted to have some kind of meaning to it. So this is from my home city, the carp. And that's exactly the reason why all the other fittings are, are waves too. And you can see that the sageo is also the, the silk one. And this is the ki Cool version, both for the Wakizashi and also for the Uchi Katana. One thing that is different in the Wakizashi though, is that the Wakizashi actually has a dragon tsuba on it. In some of the old Chinese myths, they say that the carp will go up to the sky and they actually turn into dragons. That's the reason why I have a carp on the Uchi Katana and also a dragon on the Wakizashi. That's the story I wanted to give to these two katana. And now that we have basically taken a look at the outside, of course, let's take a look at the blade. I've actually ordered the longest Uchi Katana and the longest Wakizashi you can ever make a Tozando's custom katana. And let's start pulling it out. Now this is a 2.7 Shaku Katana. So it is a very, very long Katana. Take a look at it. It's beautiful. You can see the big wave patterns on it. Of course, because it's long, it is the Habahiro, which is the bigger Katana. So it's quite heavy, but the Bohi is actually deep. So it does feel pretty light. And for the Habaki, you can see I chose a silver one that I thought would match the designs of these parts, the Huchi and the Kashida and such. And of course, let me draw the Wakizashi out too. Wow, it's beautiful. It has the same Hamon and it has the same Habaki too. Completely matches it. Oh my gosh, this is beautiful. And again, both of these are Yaito. So they are durable for actual Yaito training. They're strong. This is the most beautiful Yaito I've ever seen before. They probably weren't listening. It's, it's probably weren't listening, yeah. This is it. This is my ideal Yaito. But guys, just taking a look at them here will be so much fun, right? Again, I did choose these katanas specifically for my training at Yushinkan. So how about we actually go to Yushinkan and watch me trying out these katana doing some of the kata of Yushinryu. So everyone, I brought my newly made custom katana all the way to my dojo. They are very, very beautiful. Okay, so first of all, let's put them in my dogi then. So Wakizashi goes in first and the Uchi Katana later. Look at that. Guys, take a look at it. What do you think? The redness of the Katana are so cool. But now of course, let's try drawing it out and actually swinging it a couple of times. First time actually drawing it to swing it. Okay. All right. Woo! Two Shaku, seven Sun. It is really, really long. Okay. Oh, the skull handle is really long too for the balance. Oh, yes, it is heavy. It is very heavy. Oof, my gosh. I've never swung such a long katana before. Ah, it's so hard to take balance. Okay, so it is a little bit hard to handle, of course, because it's long, but no, I can do it. I can do it. Absolutely. It's not impossible or anything, even with one hand. 
It's not impossible. I can do it if I wanted to. Okay, this is amazing. Wow. Now then, let me try out the wakizashi to let me try pulling this out. Okay. Here we go. Ah, the hamon is beautiful on this one as well. Yeah, it's easy to handle still. So then with these two new katana, let me try out some of the Yushinryu kata then. Oh my gosh, I was trying to do a couple of two katana style kata and I just figured out it's almost impossible for me at the moment. It's way too heavy and it's way too long for me. So I was actually concerned about two things and they're both about the tsuka handle. Um, it's a little bit longer and, and again, I try out the ikkanmaki this time, right? But as I was trying it out, the tsuka handle being a little bit longer, of course it does feel slightly different from the other katana that I've um, used to training in. But it doesn't matter that much to be honest. Once I got used to it, I kind of, you know, gradually adjusted to where my hands would feel comfortable swinging this katana. So I'm pretty sure I just need a little bit more experience on how to handle this properly. And secondly, the ikkanmaki again, the tsuka wrapping, this doesn't bother me that much either, actually, to be honest. It doesn't make that much of a big difference. This is my first time trying it out, but it, it felt perfectly fine. All right, so swinging my new two custom katana was a lot of fun. Let's get back to my room. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this video was useful for you to be able to choose your ideal custom katana too. And of course, I know that there are other websites probably that does make custom katana for you, but still, I recommend Tosando the most because they probably have the best English speaking staff. And of course, I have been using their equipment for a really long time and I definitely guarantee you the quality of the equipment that they make. And guys, this is actually not the end of the video yet. Although I earlier said that's it for today, <laughs> that's actually not it for today. Something really important I still have to announce to you guys. Tozando said, Shogo, you made an amazing custom katana set this time. Would you like to sell your custom katana on our website? So now if you go to Tozando's website, you can actually find my custom katana ready for you. If you want to have the same custom katana inside your house for your training or for decorations, you can actually jump to the Tozando and there's a tab saying last house to katana so you can buy it right away. And of course, you don't have to buy it. <laughs> if you want to, you can. If you make your own custom katana, that is perfectly fine too. It'd be great if you can send me a picture of your katanas through DMs on Instagram. I'll be waiting for all of your messages. So everyone, that would really be the end for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye-bye.